for him. <laughs> I'm not gonna like the fact that I've I've changed. I have changed. You know that I've never been on my own before. That was a clip of Jane Fonda in the film Coming Home, for which she won an Academy Award for Best Actress. That was a great film. It was a wonderful film. Yeah. It grew out of my three years working with veterans and, and active duty servicemen. Yeah. And all the things that I learned, I tried to put into that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, John Voight, um, did you have an affair with him? No. Okay, just checking. I was married. You were married at the time? <laughs> yeah, because uh, he was kind of hot in that, although par it's interesting in that movie. I watched it and I thought, well, Jane's hair got curly after she had spent a night with him. It was straight before that. Now your hair got well, curly. Well, I, I, I began, it was my idea to, you know, I was straighten your hair yeah. and wear certain kinds of clothes. Yeah. And as my husband was in Vietnam and as I began to become part of the peace movement and began to become real, um, I, my hair, my Curl. clothes, everything began to get yeah. real. Yeah. But uh, he was a paraplegic. And so, but there was great sex anyway. Yes. The man that was, it was based on, Ron Kovic, after the movie came out, he said, thanks, my sex life has improved so much. <laughs> <laughs> you now, know. You, know, John, you know, it's funny, it's ironic, because John Voight is a big conservative. You might know that. Did you, get, did you fight with him politically at all in the no. movie? No. No. Nothing. No. Uh, no. Yeah, because... Uh, Sometimes that you know. happened later to him. I don't know exactly what happened. Oh, really? He yeah. wasn't. Yeah. No, no, no. No, we were very much. Uh, uh, he was very involved with m me and my then husband Tom Hayden and mm -hmm. our anti-war activities. Really? Oh, sure. Absolutely. So he, he's become. Angelina much more... Jolie went to the children's camp that Tom and I ran. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she she has issues with him too. I think about his politics. Although I don't know, it's in the papers. What do I know? I don't know either. Uh, you know, and then um, so I have to ask you about Barbarella. I mean, when you look back and you see yourself in that movie, now, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you see that? I'd like to do it over again. <laughs> we, I, I, we made some mistakes. It could have been a really strong feminist movie. Um, you know, for example, instead of being someone from this very evolved planet that comes to this backward evil planet and teach them how to make love by taking pills and touching fingertips. No, yeah. that's the way they would have done it. Mm -hmm. I would have brought them true intimacy. I would have taught them how to really mm -hmm. make love. Mm. You know, when, I, when they put me into that machine that was supposed to kill me by, by orgasm, yeah. instead of being kind of scared and everything, I should have gotten in and laughed. <laughs> <laughs> no question I'm going to blow the fuse. There's no, I, I, I wouldn't have been afraid at all. Uh huh. Yeah. But it was Vadim's movie, right? So he had his own ideas of what sex was about. I yeah, guess. and I had no ideas at that time. Yeah. So <laughs> that it was, was whatever he. That was the end of my first act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it says I read somewhere that you felt you said you felt alone, surrounded by lights. That being an actress at that time, your early days, you were lonely in it. Yes. No, I don't quite know where that. Uh, no. That's a quote of yours. I right? used to. I used to go onto the sets where friends of mine, or, or I remember, I went onto the set where Marilyn Monroe was shooting uh, *Some Like It Hot*, and I, I had not become an actress yet. And just the, um, you feel like a foreigner. You come onto this dark set, and somewhere in the middle, there's this circle of light, and all the energy is there. Everyone's attention and energy yeah. is going there, and you're on the outside. And something inside me said, I, I want to be there. Mm. I, I want to be in that circle of light. But I was very young at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand what it all meant. And the, but I do remember seeing Marilyn leave the circle of light and walk towards me, and she had the light in her she and did, with her. Yeah. She that, was amazing. She, did you know her well? Not well, but she liked me. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I found her very beautiful. And, and sad and fragile. Isn't it amazing how her iconic uh, status remains to this day? That people, I mean, even the youngest kids know Marilyn Monroe. The pictures of her, she and, and James Dean and Elvis, those are the people from the 20th century who have uh, continued to yes. have this effect on people. Yes, and, and all of them had, besides their uh, iconic nature, there was something fragile, yes. something you could identify vulnerable. with and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I think that has. But you know, it. the sad thing is, none of them had a third act. None no, of them, no, unfortunately. No. Yeah. Audrey Hepburn is another one who died, I think, too young. She was in her 60s. And she, I would have, the New York Times, when she died, they had an op-ed piece that said, we would have liked to see how, how she taught us how to age. Yeah, and she would have done a great job. She would have, but you she are doing have. that job, Jane. 
you're doing it. Well, I think this book, Primetime, is, is, is doing it. This is, you know, we don't have a road map. We're living 34 years longer than our grandparents did and our great grand. It's a whole second adult lifetime, and there's no road map how to do it. So I wanted with Primetime to kind of start to develop a road map so we'd know how to do it. Do you find it ironic at all or distressing at all that as you reach the age where you really know what you're doing, that it's such a short time that before you'll be gone? It's not such a short time. It's, well, it's actually much longer than we think. If we're lucky enough to, you know, to not, I, I mean, I could die walking out of here. I might, I might very well die. It doesn't scare me. It doesn't? But no, not at all. No, because if I died right now, I would have very few regrets. M you know, my, my, my fear, as I write about in the book, is, is coming to the end of life with a lot of regrets when it's too late to do something about it. Mm. And that's why it's important to live your your life in such a way that you won't have regrets when you die at least minimal regrets Absolutely. you have to live every moment as fully as you can you have to try to understand what you're supposed to do with your life 